There are many reasons that the very successful Masters Golf Tournament is in Augusta, Georgia. Success, after all, has many champions. One of the most indirect is a Augusta patent medicine peddler who also found success in other realms. His name was Dr. William Tutt. Born in 1823, when Augusta still had Revolutionary War veterans around, William Tutt died just before the 1900s arrived. He saw much of our city change, some of it by his own hand. Educated as a doctor, Tutt seemed to have realized quickly there was more money to be made selling medicine than practicing it. He also realized the value of good marketing and was a heavy advertiser in the Chronicle for a variety of patent products, including his famous liver pills, his Tut's hair dye, sarsaparilla, and the universally useful Tut's pain alleviator. He had many partners in Augusta, and then he went to New York City, and he did very, very well. But the war between the states broke out, and he got stuck up north, but he didn't stay there for long. When Dr. Tut heard rumors that folks back home thought he had become a union booster, he took a boat to Bermuda, ran the federal blockade to New Orleans, then took an overland route back home to Augusta to suffer through the conflict with his neighbors. Like them, he suffered financial losses, but when the war ended, the market for patent medicine returned so did Tut's influence. In the late 1860s, Tut championed an ambitious civic plan to jumpstart the city's economy with a project to enlarge the Augusta Canal. But back in Augusta, some considered the task too ambitious and blocked Tut's initiative. So he tried something else. He came up with a bold plan for an agricultural and mechanical fair. Although many of the same critics complained about its cost, this time Tut got his way, and the fair that Augusta pulled off was considered one of the city's success stories. Things went so well, Augusta revisited the canal expansion, and following the trail Tut had already blazed, pulled off that success as well. The region's economy improved, and toward the end of the century, northern tourists were beginning to find Augusta a delightful place to avoid winter's chill. Dr. Tut noticed. Tut conceived another bold plan, apparently the only kind of plans he ever conceived. This one for a grand hotel perched on the hill overlooking downtown. He soon began acquiring property, quietly because Many of his neighbors did not want to have a grand hotel next door. Tut quietly began to acquire land, in particular, the garden estate of Anna McKinney Winter, who wanted to move to a smaller place down Millage Road. At first, her old neighbors thought Tut was replacing her house with a bigger new one. Soon they realized nobody needed a house that big, and all they could do was watch while he constructed what became the Bonaire Hotel. Opened in 1889, the Bonaire not only brought tourists to town, it brought the new sport of golf, developing its own nearby course. So began Augusta's golf tradition, which inspired the Masters Tournament, which continues to enhance our town's reputation. For all this, we can thank a doctor who became a pharmacist, who became a marketing expert, who became a hotel owner, who became a golf course builder. History's funny that way. <laughs>